Hello, Convention Center family. How you doing out there? Um, Chef Daryl O'Donnell here. And Chef Matthew, pastry chef. Uh, welcome to our, our home, our kitchen. Uh, during lockdown, I know everybody's been cooking out there, uh, honing their skills, and something that's been a tradition in my family for a long time, and, and Matthew as well, is making pizzas with the family. It's a lot of fun, it's a lot easier than you think. All right, so we're gonna get started with making um, our dough. This can make all sorts of different types of pizzas. You can have nice soft pizza, thick, uh, like pan pizza, really thin, crispy uh, pizza, almost like cracker thin. That's one of my favorites. We have here, like most breads, it's very simple. It's just flour, four cups, yeast, one and a half teaspoons, sugar, one and a half teaspoons, and kosher salt, has to be kosher, and that's two teaspoons. And then finally water, or not finally, but Water, we have one and a half cups, and then a couple tablespoons of oil. And the reason I put it in a big bowl like this is that I pour it, it, whatever I can from the bowl into the recipe, and then the residual oil I use uh, for the next step of the process. So first goes in all your dry. So we're gonna put in some flour. So the two flours that are best for this purpose are bread flour, or high gluten flour. Either one of those are gonna work great. We've got our salt, sugar, and finally we have our yeast. Now this is instant yeast. It's very fine grain. So if you have instant yeast, the instant yeast can go directly in, just like that. If you have an active dry yeast, you have to dissolve it in your water first. So just five minutes maybe, put it in there, stir it every couple of minutes until it's fully dissolved. It won't dissolve in your dough, so you have to dissolve it in your water. Oh, also important is to use a dough hook, all right? This is a dough hook. They all have different kind of shapes. I've seen many different shapes, but ultimately it's one piece. And the reason we're using a dough hook is this very gently folds the dough. Just about done with the dough. It's been mixing for about five, six minutes. It can be up to 10, but don't go by time. Go by what the dough looks like. So I'm gonna turn it off, lower the arm, take a little piece of dough out. Okay, so we have a little piece of dough, and this is how we test to see if the gluten development is proper. We just kind of stretch this out, and we're looking for what's called a window. See right there, how thin that is? So that's what we're looking for. A nice window, you can see my gloves through it, the blue. So that's what we're looking for. So we know our dough is ready then. Okay, so you just take your dough, and at this point there's so much gluten development, the dough really sticks to itself, so it should come away clean from the bowl and from most other surfaces. In fact, you can just wipe down the bowl with it and it should pick up all the bits. So I just like to round it off a little in my hands. And then we, here we have our bowl with the oil in it. I put it in there and then just fold up in a circle. And this coats the outside with oil and then flip it over. So we have a nice bowl coated with oil. And you just cover the bowl. Like so, and this goes in the fridge overnight. All right, now that uh, Matthew's done with the hard part, uh, getting the dough all nice and ready, while that's sitting in the fridge overnight, so this can be done day ahead, day of, whatever, uh, it's very simple, this is your pizza sauce. So we take uh, the San Marzano uh, tomatoes. <clears throat> so I like to just keep it simple. You know, in Italy, it's all about uh, simple ingredients, but Beautiful flavors, right? So put the tomatoes in there. I like to put a, a good amount of basil. Uh, I like to put just a little bit of garlic. 
little bit of salt, little pat of pepper, just a little bit, and salt. So I like the tomato flavor to really uh, stand out. And that's it. I got this hand blender. You just simply put it in there. If you don't get tomato sauce all over you, you're not doing it right. And that's it. It's that simple. If you don't have a hand blender, you can throw it in your blender. it out and then once they look like this cover cover right thank you once they look like this you're ready to make pizza usually takes uh, less than an hour maybe 40 minutes somewhere in that range all right so now that we have our uh, the dough balls all nice and proofed out you gotta put a, a generous amount of flour on your table right we're gonna do a couple of different styles so I like to just kind of take mine and push it out a little bit. You can pick it up and just let gravity, you, you curl your fingers like this underneath and you just let the, the weight of the dough kind of stretch it a little bit, moving in a circle. I like to just kind of round it out and then kind of like you see on the, on TV and the good old, your favorite pizzeria is, Give it a little toss. It takes a little practice. You want to keep your hands together and you kind of twist as you throw it and you're spinning it so that the centrifugal force kind of pushes it all out. If you're not comfortable throwing it, that's okay too. You just kind of keep working it. I just want to point out real quick, I took one of these and I rolled it with a rolling pin and that knocked a lot of the air out of it. So you can see there are almost the same size, but you can see all these little air pockets in Chef D's. This one isn't gonna have it. This pizza is gonna be more like a cracker, real crisp and that real thin, really crisp crust. And then this is the fun part. The toppings we have, we have uh, sauteed mushrooms, you can do raw or sauteed either way. Some nice bell peppers, uh, kamada olives, red onions, uh, a little salt and pepper for the top. Uh, my family favorite, basil, everybody loves to put a little basil on top. Uh, some, some prefer before it goes in the oven and some prefer just to top it when it comes out. Um, then we have a little meatball here, diced up, you can do Italian sausage, pepperoni of course, and some fresh garlic. When Chef D did his edge, he curled his hand under it, and that kept something of a of a of a pizza crust on the on the edge. When I do it, the thin crust one at least, I just pinch the edge, and that makes for a much thinner edge of the pizza. It's going to be cracker like cracker crisp. And then just right down, and then all the rest is the same. Now this whole sheet pan can go in the oven. Now, we have this uh, fancy uh, oven in here. Um, well, I'll tell you in a sec. So you want to hold this about a 45 degree angle and just give it a little, 
and pull it back and it slides right off. And we're gonna leave that in there. Depends, um, probably about six minutes depending. So this oven is what, 550? So you want your oven, mine at home only goes up to 550. So you crank it up, you have a pizza stone in there, let it go for a good half hour, hour, get it nice and hot. Right on, if you have a pizza stone, uh, you can pick up a pizza peel real easy, slide it on there. About halfway through, just in your oven at home, you're gonna have, uh, you know, it's probably gonna be a little hotter in the back type of thing. So, if you feel sealed enough, comfortable enough, just give it, I like to give it just a little 180, 180 turn, let it go. So you stick your little pizza peel under there, check it out. Push on the crust, nice little crunchy, huh? Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that beautiful, Matthew? That is beautiful, Matthew. Look at that. We're gonna let this rest just a minute because if you cut it right now, all the cheese and everything oozes out, so you gotta wait like a minute. And so I like to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil around that crust, all right? Hit with just a little bit of sea salt here, like that. A little, just a little basil fresh on top. My son likes putting this down with the cheese, which is delicious that way as well. But that way, all right. And then the trick is cutting into six. You gotta make an X. You make an X like that and then half. Uh, here's Matthew's version. This is the thin crust. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So this one's gonna come out a lot, lot, uh, lot more crunch to it. Yeah, you're gonna see nice color on the bottom, really crispy, firm cracker-like uh, crust on it. Just to kind of round out the, the Sunday meal, there's a, a nice little caprese, simple fresh ingredients. You got fresh mozzarella, beautiful tomatoes, basil, a little balsamic, salt and pepper. And then a good old Caesar salad, super easy. So um, romaine lettuce, some nice Parmesan cheese, homemade croutons. And you could put together Caesar dressing pretty easy or you can buy a pretty decent one at the stores these days and make it easy on yourself. So um, thank you for spending time in the kitchen with Matthew and I today. It was a pleasure uh, from our family to yours. Uh, make it a tradition, it's a lot of fun. Bon appetit.